for this episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL TV where we take a few minutes to talk about recipes in a featured category. Today's category is Cajun (laughs) Cajun cuisine. I'm Katie and as usual I'm joined by Elizabeth and Beth who will tell us about their recipes. So Elizabeth, tell us what you chose today. Okay, so um, I think I went a little sideways on this but you guys can be the judge of that so I love New Orleans I've been there six times now I think um love the food down there delicious um I have had several like New Orleans themed parties in my life just like with friends when I get back to cook different things so I've made jambalaya I've made gumbo um I've made various things like that. Um, and, but for this episode, I decided to make muffaletta, which I guess is not technically Cajun. It's more just like New Orleans. So I apologize for that, but that's what I did. Um, so, um, I love muffaletta. Uh, muffaletta is a very traditional, uh, sandwich that you find in New Orleans. And, um, it's served, it's a big round of Italian bread, that is sliced in half. And then um, you put various things on it, which I'm gonna get into, and then you press it down. Um, I don't exactly know how they do it traditionally down there. I use like a bunch of heavy books. You wrap it in parchment paper and like press it down and then you cut it and serve it in um, triangles. So anyway, I made this um, for, a New Orleans party that was a little while ago. And um, basically this is what you do. I'm just gonna, I didn't use um, a recipe specifically because I know how to do it, but I did pull up a couple different recipes today just to kind of like reference. Um, So the main thing that you kind of makes it muffaletta is you make your own olive salad mixture. Um, So you take green olives um, and then you take, I don't know how to say this, giardinaria, giardinaria, yeah, whatever. It's like a bunch of pickled veggies. Um, Giardinera. Thank you. Giardinera. You're right. Giardinera. Um, Some roasted red peppers. Uh, You should throw a shallot in there. Um, olive oil, red wine vinegar, some dried basil, dried oregano, salt and pepper. You can put some capers in, you can put a little bit of garlic in, um, and you just kind of pulse that in a blender until it's all mixed. It's still chunky. It's not supposed to be smooth, but it's just all combined. When you take your big loaf of bread that's cut in half, you drizzle some olive oil on both sides and you spread this delicious mixture on both sides. And then on the bottom half, you're going to do a couple layers of big um, provolone rounds and then some Genoa salami. And then again, it's kind of up to you. You can use mortadella, you can use capicola, whatever. Um, I used salami and mortadella. Um, And so you do like provolone salami mortadella, provolone salami mortadella, whatever you want. Um, And then you push the other layer on and again, wrap it in parchment paper and press it down in the fridge. Um, Let it kind of sit. Like I did it, I think I made it like four hours beforehand and then pressed it down. Um, And it, then you open up and cut it into triangles and serve. And it is super, super delicious. It's great for a party because it is so hearty and filling and, um, you know, you're not going to eat that all by yourself. So it's really good. I have a photo here actually of the whole like kind of spread that we made. And you can see in the foreground, the um, triangles of the muffaletta sandwich. Um, And it's delicious. I will hopefully make it again sometime soon when I have enough people to warrant uh, that sandwich. So that's what I made, not truly Cajun, but certainly of the same um, locale kind of as you might find Cajun cuisine. So, yeah. 
sounds really yummy. Yeah, I've never had muffalata before. It sounds really tasty and it sounds like something that would be really cool to make for a bunch of people. And I can't wait to see your picture. That yeah. sounds really interesting. I was the hoping that you would have a picture of it. So that's that sounds really good. I love it. And it sounds like something that you would like with all that olives and capers and stuff on it. I'm like, yep, that sounds like Elizabeth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't think I've I've I think I've made something, you know, in an attempt, but it was much, you know, not not authentic at all. I don't know. I would have to Google or call my local library to find out uh if Mufaletta is is Cajun or where it came from. You yeah, know. I don't know. I should have done a little more research. I just um that's okay. And I don't I, I don't like want to Google right now. I mean, I feel like most foods in New Orleans do have some kind of like French Cajun background. Yes. And like I it I feel it like must, it must. It must yeah. have something um related. Ooh. But anyway, it it's was good. good. And when you go down there, there's like different um places that have like, you know, they like have like slightly different ways that they make it so that like whose is best so anyway yeah. oh, okay so it's kind of a everyone puts their own little spin on it exactly exactly okay very cool yeah, yeah. so Beth tell us about your Cajun cuisine all right I'm gonna go to my recipe so I made I knew I wanted to make something in the crock pot and I also you know there's like I don't like okra I landed on this slow cooker shrimp and sausage jambalaya. Um, and it includes, I'll just quickly go through the ingredients. Let's get back. So it's a large onion. It called for green pepper. Never do that. Red pepper, celery, minced garlic, a can, a 28 ounce can of tomatoes, two cups of what they say is chopped smoked sausage. I just sliced mine. Parsley, thyme, salt, pepper, and then a pound of shrimp, uh, peeled and deveined that you add uh, later after things have cooked. And then this, it called for four cups of cooked rice. So that's where um, there was some chatter in the comments like, this is not jambalaya. Jambalaya is not just stew poured over rice. But, and that commenter said, but this is a good recipe. But um, so I took uh, from another commenter to add two cups of partially cooked rice to the crock pot 30 minutes before it's all done, which is when you add the shrimp and the, so I added the rice then. And it was very good. Um, I mean, it was very simple. I was pleased with it. Uh, I have a picture. I think I have one of the crock pot and in the dish. Um, it's always good, I think, to read the comments and see what um, you can get from that because I didn't know. Oh, yeah. And so they said it was more like shrimp etouffee, the way it was described. So I also, you know, I don't want to misappropriate this uh, this. Uh, recipe uh, to or insult anyone but anyway to me it was jambalaya and I'll, always in the crock pot it's real easy to do so oh and it uh, it was from oh geez cook it's real simple like cookfood.com food.com how could I forget so yeah um, so it sounds good. I mean, yeah. some of those like easy recipes like that. Okay, maybe it's not like the exact way that like a great grandma's making jambalaya, but it's what you're making at home for dinner. And I think right it sounds like a fine, delicious modification. Yeah, and it worked yeah. out because you know I like to make um, my rice in the microwave when mm. I can, and so partially cooking it that way. And then, so anyway, that's my recipe. Yeah, I like that. I love a crock pot meal. So that's always good. And I totally agree with you about reading the comments. Like it's the only place it's good to do that on the internet is on <laughs> recipes. recipes. Because you really do get some good tips from people who have already made it. So yeah, yeah. I always love it when there's comments on a recipe. Yeah. Oh, someone else added chicken too, which is, oh yeah, oh, yeah. I, I agree. Good. Yeah. Chicken, but I just didn't 
So, so Miss Katie, what did you make this time? Well, I made Cajun dirty rice with sausage. And this is by Cheyenne Holsworth from the website nospoonnecessary.com. So I've never made dirty rice before. I've definitely um, seen it. And so they call it dirty rice because your rice gets like dirty from all the spices that you put in it. And um, also sometimes from like the browning that happens at the bottom of the pot. So that's what makes it, that's why they call it dirty. Um, but this, uh, so this recipe, you use a Dutch oven and you just heat some oil and you add some pork sausage. Now it does mention that traditionally you should use chopped chicken livers or gizzards. I stuck with the pork sausage here. Um, and there was a really interesting method of browning it that I've never done before, which was to just sort of like press it down on the bottom of your pan and leave it there for two minutes undisturbed and then flip it over season it and leave it for another two minutes undisturbed before you then break it up and cook it for another minute. So that was just something that was new to me. Um, I liked that because it didn't <laughs> require very little effort. Um, so once that's cooked, not all the way through, but it's mostly browned, you remove it with a slotted spoon to a paper towel lined plate. And then you add some andouille sausage to the pan and andouille sausage is not my favorite, but what I did like about this was that it's diced. So it's not like big chunks of it. So it's like smaller pieces of the andouille. So you put that in your pot until it gets nice and like caramelized brown. And then you remove that with a slotted spoon to another paper towel lined plate. And if you have a lot of fat in the pan at that point, you should drain some of it out, but I didn't have a lot, so I just left it. Um, and then you add your veg, which is bell peppers, which I used jalapeno instead, um, some onion, celery, cook that until they're softened. Then you add some garlic, your spices, which is Cajun seasoning and cayenne, salt, pepper, cook that for 30 seconds to a minute until it's fragrant. And then you return the pork sausage to the pan. You add your uncooked rice, chicken broth, and a bay leaf. Stir everything together and then bring it to a boil. Reduce it to a simmer and you cover it. Cook it for like 20 minutes and you just like leave it. You don't stir it or anything. And then you remove the pan from the heat and let it set for another five minutes. Remove your cover, discard your bay leaf, fluff the rice with a fork, um, and you add your andouille sausage, which was reserved that whole time, wasn't cooking with everything else. Um, and then, so I've got a picture of what that looked like in the pot, and then you just serve it. It says with green onions and parsley over the top. I completely forgot about that step. We just ate it. It was really, really tasty. I don't always love like the the burnt bits of rice at the bottom of the pot and dishes like this, but it wasn't too much in this one. And so I really appreciated that. It wasn't like too crunchy or chewy. Um, and it was a really, really good leftover. Ate this for dinner and then like several times the next week for lunch. So I definitely like at, after talking about it today, I'll probably just make this next week again because it was just like really good and, and easy and tasty. I'm not a huge fan of andouille either, but I do find when it's kind of cubed like that, the flavor just like is better. Like eating mm -hmm. like a thick slice of it is a little much for me, but in that dish, it sounds like it would be really pleasant and, and add to it. Yeah, I agree. I was, that was a, that was a nice discovery for me, for sure. Did you get your sausage anywhere in particular? Was it anything special? Okay. Nope, just from Meyer. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I feel like that would um keep really well too. Like you put it in the fridge and then it would be good for like the next day, heat it up with yeah. I like it definitely was. That was probably the best part about this. Like, okay, lots of leftovers and they're really tasty. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's great. 
All right. Well, we want to thank you for watching Recipe Share and be sure to click the link below to look at the event page on aadl.org to find the recipes we talked about and to share your own in the comments. Join us next time when our category will be Notable Nightshades. We're looking forward to seeing what you've been making. So thanks for sharing. Recipe Share. Recipe Share. Share a little recipe.